Hello everyone, welcome back to the What Mom Loves podcast, a positive parenting podcast for all the cool moms out there. With me, your amiable host, Isma, and for today's topic, I'm going to be sharing how to achieve work-life balance as a working mom. So today I'll be sharing the challenges faced by working moms. I'll also be sharing some self-care tips. I'll share tips on how to set boundaries at work, especially with your colleagues at work, how to leverage technology to make life easier for you. I'll also share some legislation about flexible working in the UK and some careers that you can look into that offers flexible working. Sit back, relax, go grab some coffee, tea, whatever you like, and let's get into today's topic. Achieving a work-life balance can be a challenge sometimes, especially if you know you're just starting out in your career or if you're a young parent who you know you just had a child, like your first child. So sometimes you might find it challenging to achieve work-life balance. And especially if you're you're like you're a young parent with multiple kids, like twins or triplets, you know, um, it can be a challenge to achieve work-life balance. I've been a freelancer and I've also been a full-time employee. So I know how the two playing field works. And I know the challenges I faced as a young parent trying to develop my career. So first off, let's talk about the challenges faced by moms. So having a hectic work schedule, you know, having to meet tight deadlines at work can have an effect on your family life. And um, this can lead to you feeling guilty, you feeling stressed because, you know, you have to leave your child with a child minder or even family that can help and support you. So the, the feeling of guilt creeps up, you know, when you have a tight, hectic schedule career that you started off being passionate about you start to avoid going to work every day because you're experiencing burnout you're you're feeling stressed um, you're not as energetic as you used to be these struggles can affect your work-life balance so it's very important for you to identify all of these challenges on time and then find out ways for you to improve on them as time goes on. So here are seven tips to incorporate self-care routines into your busy schedule. The number one tip I will share with you is to schedule me time. So you need me time for you to focus on yourself. So me time can be you you know, having a leisure walk in nature. It could also be you having a bubble bath and just, you know, using scented candles, bath bombs, bath salts in your water, just for you to relax your muscles and just rejuvenate yourself. So this is very important because it will help you alleviate stress. Number two is to break your tasks into manageable chunks. Now, if you have a big task, to plan for so let's say for example you're an event planner and you have a wedding to plan instead of you know going diving deep into you know the nitty-gritty of you know the big elaborate wedding that you're trying to plan you can break tasks into small chunks so you could first start off by finding a venue you know for your clients so breaking tasks into small chunks can help prevent overwhelm and just help you focus on what's important without stressing yourself too much. So number three is to delegate and outsource. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Some people find it difficult to ask for help. I'm I'm one of those people, to be fair. Sometimes I find it difficult to ask for help, but I've learned along the lines that, listen, you can't do it all by yourself. So if it requires you to pay for a childminder, you know, or pay for a babysitter, you need to invest in that. Um, it, it could even be, you know, you know, paying for cleaning services at home. So if you are overwhelmed at work and you're also overwhelmed with household chores, you can delegate this task to your partner or, you know, family or friends who can support you, or you can outsource these things to companies that focus on those services like cleaning companies, 
child care services, um, you know, child minders, babysitters, nannies, or pairs. Um, yeah, you can you can literally delegate any task to anyone. Number four is to set boundaries. So you can set boundaries at work and at home. Setting boundaries at work can look like learning to say no to some work that drains your energy. So work that you do not enjoy, um, you can learn to say no to those work. Um, and I'm not talking about important work that you have to do that is part of your job description. I'm just talking about, you know, work that could be like, you know, volunteering work. And if you have a busy schedule and you're not able to volunteer for some things, it, it's okay to say no to those kind of work. Because if you keep on saying yes to those things, coupled with your busy schedule, you will experience burnout, you will experience stress. So it's very um, effective for you to learn to set boundaries at work and for your colleagues to you know, know your boundaries and for you to also respect your colleagues' boundaries as well because as you're setting boundaries, your colleagues have their boundaries as well. Um, so it's very effective for you to respect other people's boundaries as well as enforcing your boundaries. So number five is to practice mindfulness. So mindfulness can include practicing deep breathing exercises, taking a deep breath in, holding your breath for like four seconds, and then taking a deep breath out. You can also practice yoga. Yoga is a good fitness exercise for you to, you know, be mindful and for you to meditate and, you know, just stretch your body out and de-stress. You can also practice journaling. Journaling is a good way for you to just kind of dump all of your thoughts for the day into a journal you know for you to clear your mind and for you to be able to practice self-awareness so number six is to prioritize sleep many of us do not prioritize sleep and that is not good some people feel like oh because bill gates wakes up at 4 a.m to work so therefore i have to wake up at 4 a.m to work Meanwhile, you slept at 12 a.m. So at the end of the day, you've had only four hours of sleep throughout the whole 24 hours timeline that you've got in a day. So this is not effective. This can lead to major health issues if you continue. So it is recommended that every adult should have between seven to nine hours of sleep a day. So this, you know, is ideal because it helps your brain relax your brain works non-stop 24 hours a day so sometimes you just need to relax you need to rest rest your brain rest your muscles just rest and sleep i was reading an article one time on google um, about having nap at work so some companies are brilliant in the sense that they've got like napping pods where people can have 10 to 15 minutes you know, sleep during working hours during their break times. That just helps them reset their energy levels. And most people who have had a nap at work tend to be more agile after the nap. They tend to be more energized, more you know, focused. Um, they're not drowsy at work. Those kind of companies have been able to prioritize rest, which is very important because everyone is different, right? Everyone is different. Some people do not sleep ever. They never ever sleep during the day. They, they only sleep at night. Whilst some people, they have to have some form of daytime sleep you know and also some nighttime sleep so it's so important for companies and everyone in general to identify that everyone is different because some people still do not know that everyone is different some people think that everyone should be the way that they are and companies that do not prioritize sleep sometimes have a workforce that is overworked and sometimes they, they won't be as productive as they should be. So encouraging people to have a nap at work, especially during their break times, is effective. Having a private room for this 
in the workplace is also very effective. This is something companies can look into, you know, having a private self-care room. They could they could name it a fancy name like a self-care room where, you know, employees can go take 10 minutes break to themselves, just a room where they can just stay by themselves to meditate or maybe pray. So I know some companies have a prayer room or even go there to have a nap without feeling judged, you know, you know, without anyone judging them or anything or without any repercussions for their actions. Um, I feel it's very effective and it will improve productivity and value to the company. So apart from daytime napping, um, let us also consider nighttime sleep as well. You have to prioritize nighttime sleep for you to be more effective at work, for you to gain strength and for you to rejuvenate and refresh. Number seven is to focus on nutrition. Plan your diet, plan healthy meals, incorporate healthy meals into your diet. You know, you can incorporate um, carbohydrates, proteins, um, fats and oils, um, water, just have a balanced diet, basically. Everything in proportion, everything in moderation, nothing should be off balance, nothing should be in excess. Having everything in moderation and in proportion, because all of these things are useful to the body, to fuel the body and to give your body energy. So these things will help you have a healthy work-life balance. It will help you feel healthy. And um, also things like having healthy snacks, snack time, instead of taking fizzy drinks or soda as a snack, you can incorporate fruits, vegetables into your snack time routine. And um, just making little changes here and there can help you achieve a healthy work-life balance. As a working parent, you have to leverage on technology. Things are changing, technology is changing, and we have to leverage on some technology that has popped up over the, the years. So things like calendar management, you need to be able to manage your calendar effectively. And the tools that you can use currently to manage your calendar are tools like Calendly, um, you can use Google Calendar, Apple Calendar, Microsoft Outlook. You can also use Notion Calendar. Um, I think Notion Calendar is a new one that has just cropped up. But you can use that to manage your calendar effectively so that you can block out time. You can let people know the times when they can book you, times where you are available and times where you are unavailable. Another technological tool that you can use is task management apps. So task management apps include apps like Trello, um, Asana, Todoist. These apps help you to manage your tasks effectively. They also help you with project management as well. So if you've got a project and you want to track, you know, the timelines for the project to be complete, you can use Asana, you can use ClickUp, you can use Trello. Um, there are so many apps that you can use. You can even use Notion. Um, you can use um, Figma as well. Figma is another one that you can use to um, collaborate with teams. You can use um, Apple Freeform as well. So there's so many, so many, so many um, tools that you can use to achieve task management. You can also look into meal planning apps. So two meal planning apps that I have used and loved are Second Nature. You can look into Second Nature and Weight Watchers. So these two apps help you to, you know, plan your meal times. They let you know what's in your fridge um, so that you can be able to create new recipes with the items in your fridge. Um, they also help you, especially if you're looking to, you know, have a balanced diet. They recommend meals for you to achieve a balanced diet. They also recommend fitness exercises, uh, mindfulness um, strategies that you can look into to just help you become more self-aware and to avoid stress. There are also outsourcing services that you can look into. So things like TaskRabbit 
it's just for you to outsource some certain you know services to other people so that they can do it for you um, you can outsource childcare you can outsource cleaning services even food preparation services sometimes um, i outsource food preparation services you can also look into freelancing websites like upwork um, for you to delegate tasks to freelancers who will be able to assist you like their virtual assistants who can assist you another key thing to do in achieving a work-life balance is to build a community it's so important for you to build a community because you cannot do it alone nobody is an island no man is an island so you need to build a community have people that you can rely on people that have your back and people that you also have their back as well because this is a two-way street you can't you know be seeking for support without offering support so if you can find a community of like-minded people so places like facebook groups you usually can find a community of like-minded people in facebook groups um so you can get support from there or you know you can you know have a community from you know your religious societies or you know school societies so there are various places where you can build a community of supportive people and um yeah just you know building these relationships can also help you in the long run some of the benefits of flexible working arrangements includes having less time to commute to work you also have an improved work-life balance because if you're working from home you know you can be home to do some certain things at home as well as working it can increase your productivity in the long run you tend to want to stick with a certain employer that values your work-life balance this just helps with talent retention and attraction and just helps with productivity and engagement at work so from april 2024 the new uk legislation on flexible working um, has been put into place to ensure that employees can now seek flexible working from day one so before it used to be as from 26 weeks you can apply for flexible working arrangements but for now from day one it will be something that you can ask for from day one basically from starting in the company this flexible working arrangement includes part-time working term time working working from home and just you know things like that really so you are meant to write a written request to your manager about you know seeking for flexible working arrangements and if this is something that has no business implications and if it's okay for the company they have the right to accept your request or refuse your request depending on you know business needs and even if they refuse you have the right of appeal and you can appeal it but um within a year you have two applications for flexible working to make uh, so before it used to be just one application for flexible working but for now you have two applications for flexible working to make within 12 months so this is a huge improvement from the previous legislation and people can jump on this asap before it becomes saturated there are also anti-discrimination protections in place to prohibit your employer from discriminating against you based on your race your gender your age your sexual orientation there are like nine protected characteristics so your employer cannot and is prohibited from discriminating against you based off of any of them so yeah you're protected and you can apply so you know make use of it if it's there you need to apply okay so yes that is the uk legislation on flexible working that i wanted to bring to your notice let us round up by looking at careers that you can jump on that offers flexible working because it's not all careers that offers flexible working there are some careers that you have to be in the office like day in day out um so there are some careers that you can you know 
be rest assured that you have some form of flexible working. You know, it could be hybrid working whereby you have two days in the office or two to three days in the office and then two to three days at home. That kind of hybrid working works for some people. You can also have, you know, part-time working or, or term-time working, seasonal working, freelancing, um, or just re working remotely, working from home um, remotely. So here are some careers that you can look into that have flexible working arrangements. Careers in HR offers flexibility. Um, I'm a HR professional and I've got, you know, that kind of flexibility in my career. I used to have hybrid working um, whereby I had three days working from the office and then two days working from home. So that kind of flexibility was offered to me as an HR professional. Teaching careers whereby you have dedicated time um, to work from the from the school and then you have term time holidays to take so that is flexible for people who have school aged children whereby you can take holidays when your kids are also on holiday you can travel with your kids you know have so much fun with your children until the next school term and then you're back in the office again so teaching careers um, we also have nursing careers. Um, nursing careers also has some flexibility whereby you have shifts to take. However, for nursing careers, it can be long hours, but there is some form of flexibility in that as well. So graphic designers also have a lot of flexibility in their career. And most of most times they tend to work remotely or they tend to be freelancers. Personal trainers, yoga instructors also have that flexibility. Financial advisors also have flexibility whereby they can set their appointment times and they can fit it around their busy schedule or around their family life. Another good career is the writer or editor careers whereby you can work remotely as a writer or an editor. Another good one is the social workers and also the tech careers. So social workers and tech careers are really flexible. You can also be able to achieve a good work-life balance. These careers offer autonomy and they also offer control over your workload. So that is it for this episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Balancing your work life is so important for your mental health and also for your well-being. So look into the tips that I've shared with you in this episode and also look into the careers that can support work-life balance. It's so important for you to choose your career wisely and you know choose the kind of career that you know that you can manage and can fit around your needs thank you guys so much for listening to this episode i hope you have gained something from this be sure to like comment subscribe to my youtube channel and also follow my what mommy loves podcast on your favorite podcast platforms i'm on spotify apple podcast and so many more podcast platforms so be sure to follow me just type in the word what mommy loves and you should see my face popping up yeah so yeah thank you guys so much be sure to also follow me on social media at what bobby loves i will see you guys in my next episode so stick around for that thank you guys again and see you in the next one bye